Jack Septikai has autism. Spoiler alert for that. But we're gonna be watching his video of him talking about this. And the reason why I wanna watch this video with all of you is because I have ADHD. And it's interesting to have a creator, especially someone like Jack, talk about their neurodivergency because I, I didn't realize that he had autism. So it's kind of fascinating. And I want to watch this with all of you to hear his story. So let's get right into it. I like trains. <laughs> He's like, I like trains. Get that out of the way. I wanted to do a video talking about a recent thing that happened to me, mm. which was I was diagnosed with autism. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave some time there for a lot of you to be like, yeah, duh, we knew. Well, if you knew, why didn't you tell me? Oh my gosh, I remember when I got diagnosed with ADHD and like I told all my friends and they're like, oh, wait, you never knew you had ADHD? And I was just kind of like, what do you mean? I didn't know. Of course I didn't know. And they're just like, well, yeah, Mari, we all knew. We just thought for some reason you just, I don't know. We just thought you knew and you didn't want to be medicated. No one told me. I want to talk about Literally. It I think it's important to open up that conversation because after having it be diagnosed officially by a uh -huh. doctor, a lot of people came to me and were like, oh, but you're so like social and you're so like your communication is great. And like, I couldn't tell. And I think that that's an important distinction to make because... Yeah, no. So, little fun fact. My younger brother has autism. In fact, he has what I believe is Asperger's, which I believe isn't even like a diagnosis anymore. But that's where he is on the spectrum for it. And my younger brother is the kind of guy who, when he is done talking to you, he will just kind of get up and just walk away. Like, he's just done. He doesn't have to do these whole, like, he just gets up and walks away. He's a very, very interesting person to talk to, but, like, if he's not engaged the conversation, he won't listen. But if you are engaging with him and it's something that he's genuinely interested in, he will talk for hours and hours and hours. And so I find it kind of interesting how, like, a lot of people, when they think of autism, they think of, like, the nonverbal autism. And it's, it's fascinating. Even for me, growing up in, like, the 90s or the early 2000s, autism had to be that thing that was what is now known as nonverbal autism. It mm -hmm. had to be the people who need to stim all the time. It had to be people who need repetitive motions, who can't mm -hmm. really communicate well. Mm -hmm. It was that, like, really stereotypical version of it that a lot of people still think today is what autism is. No, that's true. I have met someone who was a nonverbal autistic and it's interesting because this person I, I felt so bad for him he um he really really struggled with stuff and like he couldn't handle certain frequencies and if he if he heard things in like certain frequencies if things were just too loud he would just start having like these meltdowns and he couldn't communicate other than to just he would just start hurting himself like he would just start hitting himself and like start scratching at himself and it, it's like it's it's so sad because you can tell like he was frustrated that he couldn't communicate other than to just start hurting himself to let him know that whatever is happening to me like he's in pain and don't get me wrong that is part of the spectrum of it and some yeah. people are that way but that's not the entire picture anymore mm -hmm. and for me for a long time i was like oh i have adhd and I thought mm. that that was the reason why a lot of the things I do are the way I do them. But it turns out that ADHD and autism are also like a Venn diagram or like they're part of the same spectrum or however you want to visualize it. No, that's true. I remember when I had gotten diagnosed with ADHD and I remember asking my doctor, I was like, oh, wait, so how do you know like I just have ADHD and not like autism and stuff? And they do like these really special tests when you have to get diagnosed and like I, from what I remember, I don't have enough traits in the autism spectrum to be considered autistic. I have some of those traits, but not enough to be diagnosed with autism. So instead, I was diagnosed with ADHD type C, which is combination type. So I have both the inattentive and hyperactive ADHD. It's basically, I don't want to say basically, but it, to put it like in the basic, most banal terms, they're basically the same thing. And I got tested because mm -hmm. of my own curiosity. I just like figuring out how my body is, why I am the way I am, how I kind of like fit into different places in the world. And also just to kind of like give myself peace of mind because when I was mm -hmm. a kid, I was the outsider. I was weird. I played video games too much on my own. I, I like stayed 
liking the things that other people didn't really like anymore. Like they moved on like, oh, I don't like video games anymore. And I'm like, oh, I still like love video games. They're cool. No, I was the same way, actually. Like growing up, I didn't have a lot of friends. A lot of people found me weird. I was that weird girl who liked video games and watched anime and would draw like a lot of like fan art and stuff. And I still, guess what? I still like video games and watching anime and drawing fan art. Like that has not changed about me. I love Sonic the Hedgehog and trains. <laughs> All right, that's based and also hilarious. I actually don't even really like trains or Sonic the Hedgehog. Like, <laughs> that's how, how, no one knew I was autistic. As I got older, I was like, I have ADHD for sure, definitely. Mm. And I went and got tested for that and got medicated for that and it didn't really work. And I, I'm trying like different mm. medications right now. Oh my gosh, so if you didn't know, when you get a diagnosis with like ADHD or, or autism or both, they can prescribe you like stimulants and other types of medications. And the really annoying thing about trying to get medicated for your neurodivergency is finding the right flavor of medication for yourself. Because I remember the first medication that my doctor made me try was Concerta. And oh boy, was that not the right medication for me. I had some really bad episodes during that time. And there's so many things that you have to like pay attention to when you're getting medication because it's not like a, you just take medication, your brain goes normal. Like there's other factors that you have to consider that you might have like other types of health issues that are related to your diagnosis for it but at the time i was like it's not really like clicking like i have yeah. friends and other people i know who have adhd and they take medication like it's night and day no that's the same exact thing for me like it is night and day when i take my medication when i am medicated i am much more quiet i'm more monotone you can actually tell when I record my videos because um, like right now I'm not medicated. My medication's worn off compared to how most of my like videos on this channel, I usually record them when I am medicated. And sometimes like when I'm trying to have a reaction or if I'm trying to say things, I forget to say them because my medication just makes me quiet. Whereas like without my medication, I am way more yaffy. I go on tangents and like it low key kind of irritates me when people say they like me without my medication because I'm more chatty, not realizing like when I'm not medicated, so I deal with all the lovely, beautiful ADHD symptoms, such as time blindness. That's not always the case for everybody, but just some of the things they were saying about their ADHD, I'm like, yeah, I'm kind of like that, but also like a lot more. It just mm. felt like, when I was younger, it basically felt like I was the outsider. And then when I got ADHD, mm -hmm. it was like, I still kind of feel like the outsider. Mm. So I felt like there was something more. So I wanted to go get tested for autism. As I was learning more about it, I started reading stuff that people with ADHD can have autism as well, mm -hmm. that they overlap with each other quite a lot. And then I was like... That's actually what my nephew has. He has both ADHD and autism. But so like, again, I asked my doctor, like, why, why do I have some like autistic traits, but I'm not considered autistic? And again, it's because I don't have enough autistic traits to be considered autistic autistic whereas my younger brother and my nephew they do and they don't have the same symptoms either it's very like it the spectrum between like me and my other family members is that like unfortunately my nephew is on more of the spectrum than like my brother is and then what i am so he struggles a lot more with some things than we do and it's fascinating to kind of see how that spectrum relates to just everyone in like the family. Reading down the list was like, if you have autism, you likely have ADHD, you likely have depression and anxiety, you likely yeah. have intestinal issues, you yep. likely have hypermobility and joint issues. Mm -hmm. And yeah, no, when I got diagnosed with ADHD, I also got diagnosed with like generalized anxiety. And the way that was explained to me was like, my ADHD symptoms are so severe that it causes anxiety so there is a difference with that let me like clarify that you can have adhd or autism and also have anxiety however you can also have like pseudo anxiety that is caused from your autistic and adhd symptoms that is what i have so even though i was given like the anxiety generalized anxiety um diagnosis I, they put it as like very very light anxiety because i only have these symptoms when i'm having very bad adhd episodes and so they did this so that way i could be prescribed a medication which helps me maintain like those the the small amounts of anxiety i start to have and i can't mix those two medications i can't take my stimulant and my anxiety medication at the same time because you're taking a stimulant and like something that's meant to like calm you down 
and slow your heart rate because it causes like heart issues to take that. So I have to take this medication at night because it will help me fall asleep due to the anxiety I feel when I'm going to bed. And it's just interesting how like when you are neurodivergent, you have to like learn so much about your body and how your mind works. And it is such a long journey that even I myself am still trying to learn about after being diagnosed just a couple of years ago. You likely have asthma. And I was like, mm -hmm. I have all of these things. Yeah. I just have like a soup of like, <laughs> mess going on inside of me. Oh, and did I mention I also have IBS? So I also have stomach issues too. And then as I started to understand, it was like, oh, all of these things are kind of like under the umbrella of neurodivergency. And Actually, I remember when I would tell my mom I would have a lot of stomach issues and stuff. And my mom just told me I'm a hypochondriac. I, I grew up being told I was a hypochondriac for never feeling good and like always feeling icky and like tired and stuff. It was, oh man, what a, what a time. And I just thought it was interesting to get checked for different things and also just learn more about myself. And as mm. I've gotten diagnosed with ADHD and autism, and even for me, getting diagnosed with autism was just such a massive positive. I yeah. like he was talking me through it and was like, some people react poorly to it. Some people don't like to be confronted. Some people don't mm. think they have it and are a bit in denial about it. And I was like, I see this as nothing but a win. I finally I remember when I got diagnosed ADHD, I was in huge denial about it for, because at the same time, it felt like such a relief to get answers to know like, oh, I'm not stupid and lazy. Like I thought for like 20 years of my life. Oh, okay. So that's amazing. And then I, but at the same time, I'm like, well, I can't have that bad of an ADHD, right? Like I can't be on the spectrum of that bad, right? Cause I can still do all of these different things. Not realizing like, yes, honey, that is in fact how ADHD works. Sometimes you have good brain days and sometimes you have bad brain days. That's part of the spectrum. I have like more answers about myself, why I am the way I am. And not, not just for other people and where I fit in with things, because like it doesn't change anything about me. I'm still the exact same person I was. Mm -hmm. But but now you have answers and that makes it a lot better. For me, it makes me go easier on myself having yes. these diagnoses diagnoses mm -hmm. about the conditions that I have. Like knowing that I'm autistic, ADHD, or DHD as they call it, um, makes me go easier on myself being like, okay, that's why I couldn't really keep up in college because mm -hmm. my brain just kind of like works at a different pace. It doesn't really study things the way other people study it in a neurotypical way. And it, it's made me like recontextualize my life a lot more and made me just feel better about myself. Which is such a big deal because even like, you know, the years that I've been going on my ADHD journey and trying to learn about myself i still have days where i get really hard on myself for not being able to do things and unfortunately like it is something i'm still struggling with now and a lot of it has to do with just how i'm treated by other people and i'm trying not to like let that get to me as much anymore i've been a lot better about it i've been a lot kinder to myself i've started surrounding myself with people who are a lot more supportive if you don't have like a good network of support from people it is really hard to not like criticize yourself and beat yourself down from your neurodivergency and i think that's the biggest thing that i've taken away from all of this because i've lived with it for so long now yeah. 34 years of my life that like it's not, it, it's not going to change anything really. Mm -hmm. It'll just make me dealing with myself a bit easier. It'll make me go easier on myself. I hate that he's using the word dealing with himself, but oh my God, that's so relatable. I constantly say that about myself. I'm like, yeah, I'm just dealing with myself today. And like, it's, it's not like the best way to re re refer to yourself, but like, I get it. I really do. Cause it does feel like, you know, we have to deal with these kind of things all the time. When in reality, it's like, there's nothing wrong with the way we are. There really is and treat myself a bit more kindly and i yeah. think that's really important because how yes. many of us don't treat ourselves kindly and a lot of people me i don't <laughs> but i've gotten better at it people are probably like sean why are you telling everybody well it's not like you got diagnosed with cancer or something i get it <sighs> um like i said it doesn't really uh -huh. change much about myself and but it kind of does though like that's the thing like it does in the sense of you have answers about yourself and you got to learn something about yourself and you're letting other people know about it. So it's like, yeah, sure. It's not something as horrible as like having cancer. I get that. But at the same time, it's like, that doesn't invalidate you wanting to share something that you learned about yourself with to other people. Like it doesn't invalidate it.
And it's not, it's not like a condition that's like really like life threatening for me. We're not comparing apples to oranges here. Or anything like that. But I think it's a good conversation to have because when yes, I talked about being diagnosed with ADHD, the amount of people that came out in support of that, but also said that they got tested mm. because of me. Like even mm. my agent said he got tested much later in life, mm -hmm. older than I am because of the stuff I was saying. Yep. And I know that some people are going to say the same thing about this, like, oh, I didn't know autism can like present itself that way. Like looking at me, you wouldn't think that I was autistic for a lot of people. So yeah. And you know, kudos to like you inspiring people to go get tested to see if they have ADHD and autism. Because again, like nothing is what it seems. And I often get told how, oh, I don't really act like I have ADHD because look at all the stuff that I can accomplish. Meanwhile, like I'm struggling here and you would never realize it because I do this lovely thing called masking. I am the masker of all masks. Like I am very good at it. And to the point where people are very ableist towards me, it's, it's insane. I think it's important to have that conversation and also just normalize it. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to, you know what? I'm trying to fucking change this industry. Yeah. I'm, trying to, I'm going into next year with a, a, an evolutionary mindset. That mm. I want to change this fucking industry from people who are obsessed with ambition and legacy. Legacy is just another fucking word for ego and narcissism. Like you're trying to build up a life for yourself that you want people to remember you after you're dead. How self-involved is that? <laughs> uh. Do good things and hope people do good things back and just spread positivity and joy, you know? Mm -hmm. But I want to change this sort of mentality around mental health and the way people operate and this whole idea of like chasing ambition and views and goals and projects and being better than yourself every single day. It's fine to want to be better, but at the behest of absolutely everything else in your life where your mental health struggles and all you're doing is being productive and make Oh, you're eating really bad food all the time too, not taking care of your body and all that stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. ...things and just not living your life or being a person or yeah. exploring your own mental health and your own mentalities or dealing with the stuff in your past that fucked you up as a kid that's driving you to be ambitious because your dad probably instill something in you or your i mean i don't know who my dad is but like i mean i get it it was mostly like my peers and my teachers always telling me that i need to do more in life mom wasn't proud enough of you so you're trying to like <laughs> you know what i mean or break down these walls and not like hide away from all of this shit yeah have people like sit in this sort of like pseudo masculinity nonsense that we're all kind of hiding in um at least from my perspective being like <sighs> a male i think i i think he's having a brain fart right now but a male because like i i get that the toxic masculinity is a problem and i really feel bad for like a lot of guys who are constantly being berated for like not achieving more not doing more not providing more and it's really sad but on the flip side of that as like a woman there is this expectation of like I have to clean all the time. I have to cook and I have to be, and by the way, I'm a terrible cook. I, I have almost set the house on fire so many times trying to make like pasta or ramen. And like, it's, it's hard to cook because I forget how long things have been cooking. And so there are a lot of these like expectations. I have to do this kind of stuff or I have to like, just even like remembering to brush my hair before leaving sometimes is a challenge. And I have to like do a lot of like little self checks before I even leave the house. And, it, and it's tough because doing something as, you know, basic as brushing my hair, right? Sometimes like I, I just, I forget and I can't do it. So I look very unkempt and like I get made fun of a lot for it too. So like trying to take care of my hair, my skin, I have to have good skin. I, I have to wear makeup and like makeup causes a lot of sensory issues for me. It makes my skin itch, but I have to wear makeup. I have to wear these clothes that are really tight on my skin and like hurt and they're itchy and I can't breathe and I sweat. And it's like, there's a lot of like expectations that I have to do just to be valid as a person. I don't know. I'm just kind of tired of the lack of conversation around a lot of this stuff. And a lot of people, when I announced on Twitter that I had autism, people were like, dude, why would you admit to that? Like, it's some sort of bad thing. It's some sort of thing. I actually, I do understand what, I'm, what he means by this, though, because, like, a lot of people, like, just look down on people who have autism or who openly admit that they have autism. It's so bizarre. The thing that suddenly, like, makes me worse or makes me a different person. It doesn't. Yeah. Most of, the, I would guarantee you that 99% of the people who do YouTube or do content creation or any sort of creative artistic thing all have ADHD. 
There's a reason that a lot of us are attracted to a job where we make our own hours and we get to communicate with people through a camera rather than having to be in front of them 24 seven. No, that's true. Like the amount of YouTubers who have told me, because I talk a lot about my ADHD on my main channel and the amount of YouTubers who have come up to me and told me how like they also have ADHD and it's why they got into VTubing and stuff and how it's helped them a lot. It's fascinating to see how many creators are on the night neurodivergent spectrum you know there's a there's a definite pattern to this non-conformity aspect of like not wanting to do a regular nine to five job so you sit in front of a camera playing video games or you know and i bet you like half of those people probably have autism and they just don't realize that that's what autism is like the way it presents itself and it's mm -hmm. the sort of terminologies and the paperwork and everything about it the the conversation around autism and what it is is completely changing yeah. and 10 years ago i wouldn't have even said i mean even five years ago i wouldn't have said that i had autism and now here i am where i'm like yeah the signs were all there all along and, the way and they always are they really always are there. It's kind of fascinating when you like look, when I look back on my life and now that I understand that I have ADHD and not only that, I understand how my ADHD manifests as like a woman, as someone who has ADHD type C, cause it's very different for females and males, as well as if you have ADHD type I, type H and type C, that's all presented very differently. And looking back at it, I'm like, oh my gosh, it was so like, it was so obvious that I had ADHD. How did no one know that? I remember, but no one ever thought, hmm, maybe she has ADHD because back in the day, girls apparently didn't have ADHD. That was just a boy thing that boys had growing up and then they outgrow it and stuff. But that's not true at all. And a lot of women go undiagnosed with ADHD and autism for so long and it has to go with like the toxic like way females need to represent themselves and how often so many women mask their symptoms due to just how often we get berated and bullied for being quote unquote quirky it presents itself in me is not so much um apparently my communication is good but people don't realize like when i'm conversing with people i'm going through like a million different things in my brain i'm overanalyzing the way I am. I'm overanalyzing everything that I say. I'm pushing everything through a filter in my brain. I'm reading everyone's body language. You know, I was going to say something just now, but I honestly forgot. That's a, that's another ADHD thing, po. All the time to like see where things fit in. So I always say that I'm really good judge of character because I'm like hyper analyzing people all the time. And I Meanwhile, oh my gosh, I just remembered I wanted to say. So I have this issue when I try to socialize with people, people can't figure me out because uh, something really cool, awesome, special, quirky thing about me is that I say things and my body does other things. I don't know how other, I don't know how else to describe that other than like the words and tone that come out from, from how I talk don't match the body language that I'm doing. And it throws people off because I have people who try to like analyze me all the time and they just, they don't know how to really be around me. They don't know how my, how, what I'm thinking about. I'm not really that predictable, but at the same time, I can also be predictable. And it's like, it really throws people off because they, they can't figure me out. And therefore I become intimidating. I often hear from so many people how intimidating I am and how I am like, a super um, overbearing person to be around because I have a lot of you like passion the way I talk about some stuff but at the same time there there are times where like I don't show enough interest or emotion and therefore I'm considered rude or disrespectful when in reality I'm not aware of like how my body language is being perceived by other people and so that makes me intimidating to others. Not in any sort of judgmental way where I like throw it back at them. But for me, it's like a, a thing that I can use to kind of like help me get through conversations and social mm. structures a bit easier. And I'm able to weave in and out through that. And I use comedy as my tool mm. to do that. I can like sit down. I, I try to use like, I guess my superpower is like, I try to be relatable to people. Like I, I, because I have learned how intimidating I come off sometimes, I do this new thing where whenever people talk about things, even if I don't give a shit about it, I pretend like I'm interested in it because I've found that if I pretend and I just listen to like what someone else is saying, then they don't find me intimidating and rude. So I just kind of sit there and like, I'll ask questions about whatever it is that they're talking about. I'll try to like be active with my listening. So that way I, I don't get berated in some way. So I, I try to be relatable in some way. I'm in a group of people use comedy and within five minutes, I can get a beat on everybody and yeah. I can figure them out. And that, that's my superpower, guys. Yeah. I have autism, I have superpowers. <laughs>
<laughs> I, but also with me, it's sensory things. Like I've talked a lot about, like, let's say BB goes for a poop in the kitchen. I can smell when he goes to the bathroom immediately. I can pick up on the smell of shit a mile away. I'm like a shark with blood in the water. <laughs> and then if he like shits on himself or something, I'm like, Evelyn, you got to clean it up. Because if I look at it and smell it and touch it, I will, I gag nonstop. Like I want to be able to help, but I can't do it. I will gag crazy that's actually kind of interesting because like so remember how i said earlier like oh why don't i have like why am i not considered autistic this is one of the things like the traits that i have that is on the autism spectrum and that is sensory issues for me it is hearing i can't stand certain sounds so for example if my dog barks her barks pierce my ears so much i start having a meltdown and it's like, I, it's, it's not her fault. She's a dog. She can't control that. Dogs bark. Dogs bark to communicate. But when she starts barking and it like, and I'm talking about like just barking nonstop and it echoes and reverbs in the house. I have to just go upstairs because I start getting really bad anxiety and I start getting angry and I'm, I'm not going to be mad at my dog for being a dog. So I just go upstairs for like a little bit and until I calm down and then I come back downstairs. And it's really hard because especially when I'm waking up in the morning and she's so excited, she starts barking. I have to like really put a mental like um like wall so that way i'm just like okay i'm still waking up i'm still kind of grouchy i'm gonna give mochi attention to try to get her all excited and cheer her up and just play with her so she stops barking so i'll like play with her for like 30 minutes when i wake up even though i'm super groggy my body hurts and everything but i do it because i i just the barking really just i i can't deal with it. it it hurts my ears so bad another thing that really gets to me is lighting i need to have things lighted a certain way in a room otherwise i start to get really tired and my eyes just start hurting really bad so it's like those are my sensory things so yeah, it's a little bit different for everybody with certain foods i'm a bit weird with like the textures and the consistencies yeah. of them. So for me, it's like a lot of sensory things. Mm. Um, but apparently I'm doing masking mm. like all the time. Oh yeah. Um, so it's really interesting. I, I think it's interesting to see like a lot of the stuff that people talk about like in social situations and like, no, I'm just introverted and all. You probably are autistic and you just don't realize it. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's actually really funny. <laughs> oh man, that's crazy. It's It could be. It, he has a point though with this like a lot of people when they hear like you have adhd or autism they think of like this one very specific example for adhd it's like oh squirrel and then head empty and it's fascinating because like being inattentive is just one aspect of one of the adhds that you may or may not have and like it's just fascinating how when i tell people yeah i have adhd and they're like oh, oh okay and then if i am masking and i'm doing things kind of normal and stuff and then i have like a bad adhd day they're just like why can't you just, why can't you just, and it's like, why can't you just shut the f up and realize when I told you I have ADHD and it's like people just forget because they don't understand what it's like. It's not the same as like wearing a pair of glasses and if you take off your glasses, you're blind and people can see and acknowledge that. It's not the same way when you have ADHD or autism. It's also not the same way when you're deaf because my mother is deaf. Um, She has 80% hearing loss so she is legally deaf and growing up with her and her hearing aids the way people treated my mother they treated her like she was mentally challenged after telling them she's hard of hearing and growing up and seeing that and growing up now and seeing how people treat me it's like yeah they they don't understand how a disability works unless if it's glasses the glasses is like the uh, either if you have glasses or if you're in a wheelchair that's like the only disabilities that people seem to kind of understand and it's crazy. And unfortunately, getting tested for autism is a really tricky thing to do because I went privately because the waiting list publicly on the NHS is like two years. Fuck that. I can't imagine having to wait that long to kind of like get an answer for things for yourself. So I feel for everybody out there yeah. um, who has to wait that long. I'm lucky that I was able to go private and it still took like two and a half months to get that mm -hmm. uh, assessment ready. And the assessment was fine for anyone who's thinking about doing it the assessment for me was go in and sort of like break down your life in a way that is like were you always like this as a kid how did you play with other mm -hmm. kids how did you interact with other people were you shy were you communicative did you how did you imagine your play when you were a kid and now as an adult how do you interact with other people is it difficult to like keep eye contact all of those types of questions i 
Do you not? When I went to go get tested for ADHD, the doctor only talked to me for 10 minutes before giving me a diagnosis. And what's it called? I was taking the test that, that he's talking about, right? And after 10 minutes of us doing like the test, he stopped. He stopped the test and was like, I'm going to diagnose you with ADHD right now. We're gonna continue the test to see how many like symptoms you fall under. And that way I can get an accurate thing, but already you have ADHD. And I asked him, I'm like, how can you tell? He goes, just by how I'm talking to you, I can see, I can see how you're acting and how you're talking and like the way you make eye contact and like your body gestures. Like I can tell like you have ADHD. That you kind of expect will be asked, but there's an assessment form that they go down through that actually is like graded yeah, it and is. for me, one of the scores, there was like a couple of things that I was being scored on, but one of the scores was like the threshold was like anything over 100 is probably autism spectrum. And I scored like 121. I don't remember what my score was, but like I said, whatever my score was, it wasn't enough to be considered autistic, which is why I was only diagnosed with ADHD, but I was diagnosed with the more severe type. And it's interesting because I have more of the hyperactive traits, which is what is seen in males. When you see like men who have ADHD, they're very hyper, they're constantly moving around and they're super like fidgety and stuff. I have that. I do that where I talk with my hands a lot. I'm, if I had a 3D model, you would see how much my hands move. I really wish I could afford like the technology so you could see how much I am moving all the time with my hands and my arms. I'm always touching my hair. I'm always like scratching at myself. Like I'm always just kind of fidgeting with my hands. And this isn't that common with girls. Most of the time girls are inattentive. And a lot of girls who get diagnosed with ADHD are are ADHD type I, which is the inattentive type. That means they're still hyperactive, but they're hyperactive in their mind. It's in. It's interesting that I have the more severe type, which is both the hyperactive and inattentive. And the reason why I'm repeating this a lot is because it just doesn't click with people when I tell them it the first time. It, I have to like, I'm constantly on a broken record trying to explain to people my ADHD because I get discriminated against, I get bullied, I get talked down to a lot. I'm constantly being asked, why can't you do this? And my response to it is like, I have ADHD, like that's why. And they roll their eyes being like, oh, excuses, excuses. And it's like, no, it's not an excuse. Like you're asking why I can't do this thing. You're given an answer. Like, what do you want me to say? Like, I just don't want to. Eh? So it wasn't like a crazy high number, um, but there's definitely like the traits are there. Um, and no. you're not really supposed to say like moderate, severe or like high functioning and all yeah, that. Yeah, it's kind of ableist. That kind of stuff anymore because it's it's kind of degrading, but you can yeah. kind of like figure out where I am on the spectrum with a bunch of other like terminologies. Honestly, he kind of reminds me more of like my brother in terms of that. Like, I, I feel like it's enough where it can cause a lot of distractions in everyday life, but not to the point where it's like he can't function. That's kind of how my brother is. Like my brother can function, but there are like things that he struggles with. And so like, I don't know if they still do diagnoses for functioning. I, I, I guess not anymore from, um, I, I guess now it's like nonverbal and verbal. It's interesting how the diagnosis have changed over the years now. Um, but the, the assessment I found actually quite interesting because it is, some people don't like breaking down their life and like confronting themselves in that way. But I, yeah. I quite enjoy doing that. I'm a very introspective person and I like kind of figuring out how I take it. Me too. So I thought it was an interesting assessment to go through, mm. but it's, it, it wasn't scary or anything, at least not for me. So I would say if you're. It's not that it's like, at least for me, it wasn't scary. It's just frustrating. It's so frustrating to like have to sit here and rem and constantly tell myself, remember, you have ADHD. You will have bad brain days. It's going to happen. And like the hardest part that I've been struggling with lately is recognizing when I have a bad ADHD day. Because sometimes like one thing could just set me off and like ruin my entire day. I've gotten a lot better at that not happening as much anymore. But like trying to recognize when I am having a bad brain day and I keep using this bad brain day because ADHD is a neurological disorder and people don't seem to understand that. Neurological means my brain don't work. My brain, my brain don't work sometimes. And so literally when my brain don't work, I have bad bad brain day and when i'm having a bad brain day i can't do things such as like getting up to shower i can't cook for myself i am lucky if i remember to drink at least 
two glasses of water for the day or if I even drank anything at all. Like I have bad brain days and when you have ADHD and or autism, you need to stay hydrated. You need to take care of your body. You need to eat good foods like blueberries because blueberries are really good for your brain and it helps with the ADHD symptoms that you have. And so it's like you have to like, you have to take care of your body to help minimize the bad brain days. And I correlated a lot of my bad brain days to what it is I'm eating. So now I'm a lot more conscious about what I'm putting in my body because sometimes, even though I really love pizza, sometimes having pizza could lead to a bad brain day the next day because I'm not eating nutritional foods. You're thinking about doing it, but you're kind of like apprehensive about it or scared yeah. of it. I'd go for it. Um, if anything, the worst thing that can happen is that you end up exactly in the place that you're in right now. Yeah. And that's probably not that bad. But all the people out there, whenever I'm playing video games and they're like, man, Sean's so distracted. What is he, stupid? I was pulling my hair out every time he did this. You guys are making fun of an autistic person. Like yeah, and you should feel bad about that. Every time you make fun of me, this is who you're bullying. You're bullying an ADHD person. Hey, you don't feel so good now, huh? You guys yeah. were attacking me over stuff that I can't control. How does that feel, huh? Not so good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the reactions to it, though, were really funny. People were like, Jack, we know you did 100 episodes of Happy Wheels. <laughs> that was funny. Or I posted, like, the mustard meme from the Kendrick album of me screaming. Mm -hmm. And then right after that was like, I got diagnosed with autism. And people were like, duh. <laughs> I think that's funny. I think it's fine. I'm okay with people joking about it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't really have a problem with that. I think it's kind of funny. But I also wanted to talk about it because this is sort of the year where, not only in my personal life, I'm trying to live my authentic self, as it's called. And I'm trying to figure out more about myself and gain the confidence to kind of just be me as who mm. I am. But it's also the year of mental health for me and for Thankmas. And I think it's that's another reason why I like pushed myself to get these assessments and to kind of like open up that conversation and be sort of that person that kind of takes that initiative. So I have an audience of people that I can use that influence to spread a better message and be more positive about it and break down this whole like, you don't admit it, autistic people are bad or like <laughs> people are going to treat you differently or like it's not. And those people can kindly f off. Like I, I'm really happy that we are having these kind of conversations because this is important. Like, dude, the amount of like ableism I deal with at work all the time, like I'm constantly being called weird in the office, like constantly, like I'm being called weird. I get made fun of for my appearance. Like even if I put makeup on and I do my hair nice, I still get made fun of for how I look. Like it, it's so hard to just sit there and have to eat it in person when like your superior is saying like, oh, you know, you have such a nice smile and you have such a like nice energy and vibe about you. By the way, I don't smile that often. It's actually really difficult for me to smile and I kind of have resting bitch face and like base him, so him saying that was sarcasm. Okay, like I, you know, people think I can't detect sarcasm because I have ADHD students like, no, I, I do. I can definitely detect sarcasm. I can tell when someone's making fun of me and it's it's so frustrating because like, I'm, I'm just so tired of like crying every day at work because people are just so mean because like they, not only do they not understand like my ADHD, but they don't care. To them, it's just an excuse that that's really all it is. It's just an excuse. It's not cool to do that or, you know, I'm just so fucking tired of that. Mm. I'm tired of this version of the internet that we live in where everyone has to be like, crazy productive, crazy ambitious, build a legacy, be as cool as you possibly can be, show no signs of weakness whatsoever. That's all bullshit. Not showing weakness and puffing your chest up and trying to be the coolest person you can be and be as productive as you can and do the coolest things you can be, that's weakness to me. Mm. Because that means you're hiding from, you're just working to hide from what you're actually scared of, alone with yourself and loving yourself. I mean, it's also like that in real life too. It's so much easier to like put someone else down than to sit there and reflect on who you are as a person and i feel like that has definitely transpired over on the internet which is why we see it so much more often now and it's like it's it's really sad obviously i'm throwing out a bunch of accusations but and it's not true for everybody and <sighs> it's all unique and it's all different but you know what i mean you know what yeah. i'm getting at you know where the vibe i'm sitting in is and I want to tackle that head on next year and I want to evolve. I want to be an evolved version of myself that is, I guess it kind of contradicts itself saying like going against the whole like be better every day, but you know what I mean? 
Hmm. I want to be maybe more like be more understanding and accepting of who you are as a person. More open to who I am as a person and not yeah. dance around shit because of what everybody else tells me I should be acting like. And I'm so tired of that. I'm so tired of like people like trying to tell me like how I should be, how I should be as a as a woman. Like I need to do these womanly things or else like I'm failing myself as like a woman. Like the amount of times I've heard that from people is insane. And it's like, I, I can only imagine what it is for like the guys too, right? Like I feel really bad for how so many men are constantly being berated for not being manly enough. And it's like, wh why can't we just like be more accepting of just people for who they are instead of trying to like tell people what they need to do? Because at the end of the day, you really don't give a sh about how someone else is living their life. You're only making it seem like you give a shit because you don't want to confront how your own life is and like that's really sad that's what it is. um but thank miss is going ahead soon tickets are on thank sale miss. if you are close to the la area you want to come see it there's <gasps> so many guests i put them up already um i want to go dang how much are tickets you can go to the community tab and see it. It's all over Twitter as well. I've been posting a lot about it. Uh, we have some incredible guests coming up. We have some musical go. acts. We have two shows that are going on. Oof. It's going to be a great fucking day. I'm so excited for it. I can't wait to get together as a community and raise money for mental health and kind of like push this narrative of positivity and change and upheaval that I think the industry so desperately needs. Are you are you willing to accept a VTuber to attend to thanks, miss? Is that um is that possible? Can we get the the VTuber to come to this, please? Um because it's not been a great year for YouTubers and people oh, who God. everyone thought was amazing and great and like oh your numbers are really high, so that means you're a great person. You do No, no, it's not. I know exactly what he's talking about. And oh boy, bigger number does not mean better person. Do a lot of charity, so that means you're a great person. Not always the case. Um, and I've always tried to be a bit more transparent and honest and break down that wall yeah. and that barrier and not build myself up into something that I'm not. And I think that that's important. That's why I'm having this conversation with you right now. That's why I ramble. That's why we're here. That's why we do it. That's the end of it all. That's why I ramble a lot too, though. Thanks for watching. Um, hmm. I don't know, I have autism, that's it. <laughs> oh my God. I, I'm sorry, that, I love how he ended the video like that. That is freaking amazing. I really liked how Jack was making a video talking about this stuff and hopefully this could have opened up your mind as well and you could learn a little bit more about my neurodivergency. Hopefully this helps you learn about your own neurodivergency. And oh my gosh, I just love how we, at the end, he's just like, I have autism because he just doesn't know how to like end the video. And the funny thing is like, sometimes I don't know how to really end a video either and I have to try to make up some like bullshit for like the ending. I have ADHD.